Well, he didn't bring the chainsaw, but he really ripped it up at CPAC with a lecture. I'm Scott Ott with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green. This episode of Right Angle is brought to you by the members at BillWhittle.com. And gentlemen, at the Conservative Political Action Committee's annual meeting, the rock star this time around, of course, you know, everybody lives in the shadow of Donald Trump, which it's basically a pep rally for him these days. But the rock star was a guy who gave an economics lecture. Javier Malay, the new president of Argentina, shows up at CPAC and gives an economics lecture, Steve, in Spanish that had to be translated, you know, phrase by phrase, line by line to the audience there. And I, I listened to the whole thing and I swear all he did was give an economics lecture and he explained how economics works, why collectivism doesn't, why free markets are good, what what are the essentials or the essential necessity of property rights. And, uh, and he even got into uh, an analysis of the critique from the left about the fact that free markets, uh, you know, foster the creation of monopolies and monopolies are inherently bad. And Steve, Javier Malay made the argument that no, monopolies aren't inherently bad. Anybody who says that is only looking at that small sector of the market. They're not looking at the economy in general when you see the impact of, let's say, a company that gets monopoly status and runs other companies out of business. They're not taking the long-term view and they're not taking a broad view across the economy. In any case... I, I'm not here to to recapitulate the uh, the lecture, but I thought it was interesting that President Malay gets the chance to make this speech at CPAC during the week when it was announced that the government of Argentina, for the first time in about 12 years, ran a monthly surplus. This time, 597 million dollars. Uh, Steve, it's going to take a while, and there's still, you know, poverty is still going up. It, it apparently jumped from about 45% to uh, 57%, and he said it would. But Steve, are we still liking what we're seeing from Javier Malay? And can you believe that CPAC went bananas for a guy giving an economics lecture? I'm loving it. And yeah, uh, yeah first a shout out to uh, to the new president who uh, number one is doing exactly what he said he was going to do. Hmm. And yeah, sometimes you need a little shock treatment. This this country dealt with a, a decade of inflation and stagflation until uh, that team of Ronald Reagan and Paul Volcker said, you know what, we're going to choke this off. And, and Reagan gave Volcker the political cover he needed to do it. And we had, Reagan risked his whole first term. He bet his entire first term on this. Um, on this shock treatment of jacking interest rates up and leaving them there until inflation was choked off. We had such a nasty recession that everybody thought that, that Reagan was going to be a one term or it was over for him. But by 1984, the year of his reelection his 49 state win, uh, real wages went up in just the first three quarters of the year in the first nine months of the year, 7%. This, this country just oh. took off. Because Reagan and Volcker stuck to it with the high interest rates. And, of course, Reagan got his tax cuts through Congress as well. Um, and that kind of shock therapy can pay off if you have the courage to stick with it. And if, if, if God has some mercy for Argentina, uh, they'll, they'll stick with it here. By the way, he cut that budget. Their deficit was, uh, uh, for the scale of their economy, just as bad as ours, their, their annual deficit. And he fixed it in one month. We can do that here. <laughs> we can do that here. He just did it there. We can do that here. That said, uh, to get back to the point of CPAC, I got a lot of experience at CPAC. I think my first year there was 2009. And in the, in the years since, I don't know, I've been more than a half dozen times. I don't think quite as many as a dozen, maybe. Um, and CPAC used to be, I don't want to say stayed, because, you know, there's a lot of young people uh, doing a lot of the drinking and the other things that young people do. But but during the day, um, CPAC was a, about conservative ideas. Hmm. Um, you, you just, you had intellectuals there. And over the years, uh, it has declined from that. Uh, part of it is, yeah, you mentioned it's become Trump's pep rally, and and yeah, that's that's part of it. But this started way before Trump. It was just on the decline. Uh, attendance was was down. And Scott, what this story you just told tells me 
is that the the largely young people who still attend CPAC are still hungry for ideas. So hungry that they sat there and listened to an economics lecture in Spanish translated into English for them in real time, and and they went wild because, yeah, um, ideas sell, freedom sells, and if CPAC's getting back to that, I might end my little boycott and go back next year. Bill Whittle, uh, inflation came down a little bit. I think it came down from about 25% to 20% uh, in January. Um, And this is after a 50% devaluation of the peso, the removal of price controls, and significant rate increases in some government services. He's cutting back government spending. And obviously, he still has to deal with the legislature, so he's trying to get them to do things that they haven't allowed him to do yet. Um, But I, I thought it was... First of all, you know, a, a good harbinger that that things are headed in that direction because he said it would be there would be suffering, there would be hardship, there would be difficulty, but that the in order to change the economy fundamentally, it was going to take a shock treatment like you would do to your swimming pool when it had an, an algae bloom. You know, you have to get in there and shock that stuff. Uh, but Bill, I guess more than anything, I I did this episode. Because I was just wowed by the fact that not only would a bunch of, you know, it looked like teenagers to me, of course, they're probably young adults, sitting there in the room in CPAC or cheering and chanting uh, Malay's name, uh, and also that he was talking about hard stuff. Like he, mm-hmm. he was, he was not pussyfooting around. He was not doing some personality driven cheerleaderism and Every once in a while, you know, you kind of he had to keep pausing for the translation, so it was kind of awkward for him. And every once in a while, he'd, he'd smile and give the crowds a, a thumbs up for something. But there was only really one sort of red meat line at the end where he said, "I want to make Argentina great again." Um, the rest of it was just hardcore yeah. economics. Um, it, it, it's possible to do this. Yeah, it apparently is, and and I think the. I think the the hunger. If I had to put a single word on what the hunger is for, it's for competence. No. You know, we'd like to have somebody competent running our country. You know, be nice. Um, Donald Trump obviously knows more about economics than than politicians do. People who come up through, like Joe Biden's a career politician. He's never had to deal with any real economic issues in his life in in terms of the real world how it actually works. Donald Trump has had to deal with that. For his entire life because he's in real estate and he has to know how to make deals. But that's not the same thing as being able to explain it. And and this is a weakness because, because in order to convert people, you've got to get them to understand what it is you believe in. And and that's the first thing you have to do is make your case for here's what we believe in and then try to make close the deal by saying, and this is why we think it's better than what they believe in. And and he's not really doing that. He's He, he should be doing that. I don't know if it if it's possible for him to break through. I can imagine Donald Trump giving a lecture on economics, and I can also imagine most of the people who would need to hear the lecture turning it off pretty quickly. Hmm. Um, but the fact that the that the young people are there are are and are excited are the same reason I'm excited. I'm excited about this not because I don't I didn't understand the economics. I'm excited because the guy was able to pull it off politically. I mean, if you're able to get elected, how, how long ago was it? Three, four months now? Yeah, just and, last year. And 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 he's now in 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 a couple months he's got his government running a surplus. Are you kidding me? Can you imagine? That's that's what the that's what it is. It's competence and it's hope. It's hope for competence. That's what that's what was raging through that room there the, the 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 visible evidence that it is possible to not only have these ideas and explain them but to apply them in the real world and to get those kind of results i haven't felt this way since scott walker who did the exact same thing by the way took uh, took wisconsin from a basket case to running a surplus in a, in a year and and i was very surprised and disappointed and 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 saddened by how poor his performance was in the um was it 2016? I guess right when he was when he was when he was running for president. Uh, I, I, because 2012, yeah. I think maybe I can't. 12 I can't was, might have been 12. Whatever the case may be, he, he Scott Walker showed that you could actually do it if you understood the problem and you had a core belief system. And as as you said, Steve, you were willing to tough it out because you know when you're gonna you're gonna you've got a broken arm and it's set badly, you got to break the arm again. 
and and that's the way it works and um that's I, I, I really long for that in, in just about everything. I'd like to see competent people in my government at every level, not just at the presidency. Um, and we've gotten so far away from the consequences of consequences that um, we just have come to expect people like Gavin Newsom who just blather on about some ridiculous cut or some ridiculous thing. You know, you can't sell... You can't buy butane over the mail in California. Aren't I a great guy? It's like, no, you'd be a great guy if you if you got the state running a surplus again. Because when Ronald Reagan was running a surplus in California, you really could say, it's still not true, but you could say that was free college. It's not free college. It's never free. Something costs money. But basically what was happening was it was free to the people who were going to free college in California. It wasn't costing them anything yeah. because the state was living off of interest on 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 money that it owned and, and and instead of owed. What a novel concept that would be. Well, I, I thought it was fascinating to to watch this speech and it's a little over an hour long. I just checked um, as of when we're recording this on uh, Tuesday afternoon, um, this video has been posted for two days. Uh, one version of the video posted by Forbes has 408,000 views in two days. And then another one uh, posted by Right Side Broadcasting uh, has about 24,000 views there. But there are a bunch of versions of this online that people have posted and people are watching either excerpts of it or, or longer versions of it. Uh, you know, it's not all the time you hear politicians get up and not only quote Adam Smith, but Murray Rothbard and Bastiat. And uh. I mean, it was just, it was amazing. Um, and it, well worth the watch. And uh, even if you, you know, you only want to brush up your Spanish skills, because now you'll learn how to give a, a lecture in Spanish. Uh, but I, I was, I was greatly encouraged by the fact that there, uh, there's a packed room of people somewhere in this country that can't wait to hear about what some guy is doing in Argentina, and they want it so much, they're willing to sit through the translation of it. Uh, would that more people would be so engaged in understanding what we're talking about so that the Republican Party and the Republic itself could not just be a, a, a bunch of sloganeering, uh, personality-driven uh, political hacks, but could really care about good governance and want to understand how it works. For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making Right Angle possible.